Tonight, authorities confirmed community COVID-19 transmission in Broken Hill. And environmental groups urge locals to correctly dispose their mandatory masks. From our seven Spencer Gulf Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamane begins now. Good evening. New South Wales has had another dire day with record case numbers and a spike in deaths. But despite more cases in Wilcannia, the government and health officials say there are positive signs for the far west. Of all the numbers we've heard during our COVID outbreak, this would have to be the best. 24 far west locals who caught the virus have now recovered. That's roughly a quarter of our region's cases now on the mend. We are currently developing plans around the recovery phase as more people exit isolation. But the rest of today's numbers are anything but good. 1,431 new cases across the state and 12 deaths. Seven new cases in Wilcannia, no new cases in Broken Hill. In very low numbers for the size of Broken Hill versus the case numbers, it's, it's still going OK. But there's confirmation there have been instances of community transmission in Broken Hill and cases aren't just in people who have visited Wilcannia. That may be where it started, but the reality now is those infections are in your community, getting very low numbers and they're controlled. Another urgent call for testing issued in Broken Hill this morning. Traces of the virus found in a sewage sample taken just three days ago. Around 80% of those in intensive care are unvaccinated. October expected to be when stress on the hospital system is at its highest and also when we hit the 70% vaccination mark. But until then, a positive note to end another week in lockdown. Once you hit 80% double dose population, there is no reason why you would have a statewide lockdown ever again. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. Meanwhile, the Port Augusta community is worried single-use face masks are not being correctly disposed of. Many of the items are essential in fighting off COVID-19, but made out of non-biodegradable materials. Residents concerned with the amount of litter finding its way to Port Augusta's foreshore and polluting the aquatic environment with COVID-safe face masks becoming the newest threat for sea life to avoid. If someone's lazy and just throws the thing away, um, they won't bother breaking the cords, the elastic cords, and animals can get caught up in those. Sea Shepherd South Australia says in regional locations such as Port Augusta, it is vital that community members take time to correctly dispose of their masks, as beach cleanups are less frequent. You know, we've seen images of of ducks with them around their neck. Um, we've seen images of uh, like seals, small seals that have them caught in their teeth or caught around their neck, the same sort of thing. The increased amount of abandoned face masks is a problem plaguing the whole state, with more being found in each volunteer beach cleanup. The group says even masks littered inlands will always make their way back to the sea by wind and storm drains. Really, you should change your mask every couple of hours because they get moist, so you should be you know, you should be disposing of them, um, but you should really just cut the strings and then you should bend them appropriately. Wearing a mask is critical in the state's fight against coronavirus, but disposing of them correctly helps in the fight to keep our oceans clean. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. The state government is about to expand its trial of installing security cameras inside five disability homes, but community advocates say there are better ways for authorities to make sure our most vulnerable are being kept safe in their own home. Hoping to safeguard people living with a disability, the state government announcing the expansion of a pilot to install CCTV cameras inside state-run disability homes. The recommendation made during a task force following Adelaide woman Annie Smith, who died last year in neglectful circumstances while under care, according to police. Like any reasonable human being, uh, Minister Lansink is clearly concerned about what might be happening behind um, closed doors. It's hoped the expansion of the trial will allow the Department of Housing Services to collect more data, including the possible recording of critical incidents and to act as a deterrent. However, community groups are not convinced, citing privacy concerns. It's a camera in someone's home, and I, I doubt there'd be many of us who'd, who, who would be comfortable with um, a third party placing a camera in the place where we live. 
it's really not the best way that we can protect and safeguard those people living with a disability that are vulnerable. The South Australian Council of Social Service suggesting building relationships with outside parties to ensure people living with disabilities are included and engaged with. There are people always looking in, always checking in to see how people are getting on. Mark Zita, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, South Australia's exports total billions of dollars for the past financial year. An extensive upgrade set for Port Lincoln's weight reserve. Welcome back. South Australia has recorded its best ever trade results over a 12-month period, smashing its previous record, exporting $13 billion worth of goods, helping the state's economy rebound from the COVID pandemic. A record-breaking year in the midst of a pandemic. South Australian exporters leading the state's economic recovery. What they show is that South Australian goods exported overseas are worth $13 billion, which is a 19% increase. Local exporters on the Air Peninsula reaping the rewards throughout a difficult period for businesses. We'd be on track uh, this year for $4 billion worth of exports from this region. Also saying the area is on the verge of a bumper harvest season. Quality and consistency of supply underpinning the success of the region. We lead in canola, wheat, barley, iron ore, uh, mineral sands, uh, seafood, uh, a really diverse range. We're, we're, we really are an uh, export powerhouse this region. Trade tensions with China forcing local businesses to diversify their trade markets. Many operators turning a negative situation into a positive. Tuna in Japan, there's a real, real great prospects in Japan and South Korea as well in the Asia region, East Asia or ASEAN. The state government providing overseas pathways for businesses. Announcing our global expansion program with some great Air Peninsula companies, Dinka Tuna, EPC Food, Angel Seafoods as well. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Upper North Farming Systems Group is bringing the ACT for Ag Foundation workshop to Bullaroo Centre. Next Thursday at the Civic Centre, the workshop will cover a range of topics, including building resilience through your business and life, while looking at the Noticing Map tool. It will also incorporate 10 sessions with industry experts. Wyala's business community was out in full force last night at the launch of the city's new partnership growth program. Council will provide up to 150 local small businesses with access to a full array of services available from Business SA and the Wyala Business and Tourism Group. Programs on offer include the Business Accelerator Program and Staff Employment Assistance. Port Lincoln Council has released a modern concept design to help improve offerings at Weight Reserve. It comes as Council announced a number of open spaces around the city to be upgraded over the financial year. Grand plans for one of Port Lincoln's open spaces. The Council releasing concept upgrade designs planned for the Weight Reserve. So at this stage we've got $325,000 in the budget, uh, 200000 of that is for footpaths in and around the, the reserve, 125 dollars of that is for the, the toilet and some of the basic infrastructure. The new design elements including two small football ovals, soccer goals, a basketball court plus a nature playground. The local community asked to get involved and provide their feedback on the design. This is for the local community here. so. It, it great to have their direct involvement in the project as well and, and that's something that we're already seeing very positive responses about as well so looking forward to it. The council hoping to leverage funding from the state government to help complete the project. So we're hoping that we'll get approval from the funding body by December this year uh, with a view to starting work early 2022 on this, on this park and this reserve. The Deputy Mayor excited by the endless potential the reserve offers really good to see what it can develop into. It's already a wonderful asset, but uh, this is going to be a great uh, to see how that can further grow. The council urging locals to be proactive in the design feedback stage. Active community members that want to be involved in working bees, barbecues, and, you know, just to make sure that the park is continued to be developed in, in future years. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The RAA has found South Australia's coronavirus lockdowns are inspiring more people to start walking. And with pedestrian walkways set for a refresh in Port Augusta, nothing will stop those keen for a stroll. 
The dread caused by lockdowns giving people aspirations of getting outside and walking more often, according to a new survey. Uh, you know, three quarters of them, they understood the, the health benefits of it. And uh, about uh, just over half of them said, look, I, I do walk sometimes to save me money. More than 600 RAA members, however, revealing footpath issues are among the biggest barriers deterring would-be walkers. Footpath is a barrier to a lot of them. About a quarter of them said there's lots of trip hazards. It's a sentiment shared by the Port Augusta community, with many complaining about the lack of adequate pedestrian access connecting the east and west sides of the city. The Joy Beluth Bridge's current footpath being labelled as skinny and undesirable to cross at night. However, the new bridge duplication is planning to cater to these walkers with two large pedestrian footpaths and an access ramp to create a better ambling experience. And pedestrians and cyclists and people with prams and gophers will now be well and truly catered for with the bridge duplication, two three metre wide pedestrian walkways. The member for Stewart also saying while the duplication has been designed to speed up motorist commutes, thought has also been put into improving pedestrian access and safety as well. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Do you or someone you know lives with a chronic condition? Well, Uni Essay's Impact in Health Rural Outreach Tour is visiting Port Pirie next month. The tour outlining a new program designed to help get better outcomes for those living with chronic conditions. The event will take place in the Port Pirie Sport Precinct next Wednesday. Anyone who is interested is encouraged to book a ticket. Stay with us after the break. Library staff create their own virtual stories for Broken Hill children in lockdown. And why Alice Bennett Oval receives a top football award. Hello again. The meant to be quiet place is at the best of times, but Broken Hill's library is silent, closed during the lockdown. Staff are doing their part to keep story time going putting their creative skills on show in a virtual performance. Two camels, a crazy journey and some top class creativity. Suddenly, the world started spinning. The adventures of Big Camel and Little Camel, written and produced by staff at Broken Hills Library. We thought it would be a, a fun idea, instead of just doing a book reading and you know sitting there and reading a book and, and having that go up on social medias, um, to actually come up with our own play. Pulling out all the stops with colour, costumes and music, the three minute clip has been viewed more than 2,000 times. It is, it is very exciting. It's good to know that you can get that kind of reach and that, and that people are really into that sort of thing. It's just one way the library is keeping in touch with the community, even though its doors remain closed. We have several e-platforms that um, people can access e-books, e-audio and e-streaming. Um, as, as well as some fun educational stuff for the children. Physical loans can be renewed online. Locals told late fees are being waived during lockdown. If they do receive an electronic message to say that their books are overdue, please ignore it for now. They are just, they're going out automatically. You can keep up to date with the library and its adventurous camels through the Broken Hill City Library Facebook page. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Meanwhile, drivers in Broken Hill are reminded school zones remain in operation even through the lockdown. The state's transport minister saying drivers across New South Wales are being caught breaking the rules at rates 150% higher than usual. Road trauma is a highly emotive thing for everyone, for emergency services, um, the family, doctors, nurses. It doesn't need to happen. Children of nurses and uh, essential service workers are still at school, so please obey the, the, the school zones. Higher penalties, including fines and demerit points, apply to certain driving offences around schools. Unihub Spencer Golf is on the hunt for new board members. Nominations now open to individuals from across Port Augusta, Port Pirie, Kadena, Southern Flinders and the York Mid-North District. New board members will be appointed for a three-year term, commencing January 1 next year. More information can be found online. One of the Steel City's football grounds has been given a major award by the AFL in recognition of the redevelopment of Bennett Oval. It's hoped the renovations will encourage more AFL teams to hold pre-season matches in Wyala. 
a major accolade for one of the Spencer Gulf's premium football grounds. The redevelopment of Wyala's Bennett Oval, recently receiving the AFL's Ken Gannon Community Facility Project of the Year Award. The Bennett Oval redevelopment included uh, renovating the, the grandstand uh, as well as the change rooms. Uh, we also renovated the, the canteen and the beer booth that are, that are close by. Recognising best practice in the development of football facilities at community locations nationwide. The award providing a major boost to local football in the Steel City. So I think this project really um, represents a great example of local government coming together with local communities, in particular this one, uh, the football community. Last year, Port Adelaide hosted the Western Bulldogs in a pre-season match at Bennett Oval. Community leaders hoping the league will consider more games in the city. By having done all of these works, um, it has put Wyala in a great position to attract AFL football. Uh, but we are confident that uh, Wyala may be able to pull off an AFL pre-season game next year as well. In a statement, Port Adelaide CEO Matthew Richardson says their players commended the Oval's playing surface and the quality of the change rooms. It's hoped the club will bring another pre-season game in the near future. Mark Zita, 7 Spencer Golf News. More on footy after the break, with our experts sharing their tips for weekend games. And we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. We'll see you shortly. Welcome back. The weekend is here, and if you're keen for the football, here are our experts from across the region with their tips for upcoming games. Hello and welcome to round 15 of SGL football again. After last week's COVID interruption, round 15 is going to be played this week in a baffling move which will see the SGL grand final now go head to head with the AFL grand final. Very disappointing I think. Anyway, here at Memorial Oval we've got Lions taking on West. Lions will win that and nothing will change from there. Over at Port Oval, we've got Solis taking on Ports. Solis are run out big winners, so nothing will change there either. And up in Port Augusta, we've got Central taking on South. South will win that one. All right, see you all next week for the finals. It's finals time here in Wyala Football, and for the first time in many, many years, all four teams in the finals, a genuine chance of making the big dance and even winning it. So the major semi-final, the second semi-final, top two, West Wyala versus Runa Bay. Great to see the Bays up there again. This match could go either way. They've beaten each other during the year, but it might just be that experience of the West team that get them through to another grand final. But the elimination final will be on Saturday between... North Wyala and Central Wyala, again a cracking game coming up. Central's reigning premiers, their fourth this year, and I think it might be the Magpies who have just got enough experience there and some class in their team that will get them through to have another game the next week. Welcome to Finals Footy and good luck for everyone playing over the next few weeks. We're kicking things off with the second semi where the undefeated Marble Range are hosting uh, Waybacks at Centenary Oval. Waybacks only dropped the one game the last eight weeks, and that was to Marble Range, but only nine points. This will be a ripper game. I'm, I'm hoping both teams are at full strength, but it's going to be hard not to tip Marble Range. They have been undefeated. They're the team to beat this year. Um, Two of Marble Range to win this one by four goals. In the next game, we've got Tasmans and Lincoln South meeting also at Centenary Oval. Tasmans have been in form. Even though they dropped a game last week, they've won their last few before that. Lincoln South, they finished third, but haven't had a great run toward finals. I think they've got a few players that aren't fully fit. So I'm actually going to tip Tasmans to win this one. And a bit of a surprise, Tasmans by three goals. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather over the weekend. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks Ruby and good evening everyone. Well it was a wet one today and unfortunately showers will dampen the return of footy in the Gulf over the weekend. From 3pm today Port Augusta had a shower or two and was 19. Broken Hill was windy and reached 28 degrees and Clare had showers and was 13. Looking further out across the region now Port Pirie and Woodna had showers and got to 18. Port Lincoln, Kadena and Cleve also had showers and were 16 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, band of cloud pushing across the northeast pastorals with a cold front and trough is bringing gusty storms. Patchy cloud in cold air behind this is producing a few showers along the coast. Skies are clearer further west under a building area of high pressure. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas around one metre and south to southwesterly swells one to 
22 metres. Port Link will have a shower or two and will reach 16 degrees tomorrow. Cleve will be 14 and Woodna partly cloudy and 17. Kadena and Wyala a shower or two both set to reach 16 degrees. Port Augusta will be partly cloudy and 18. And Port Puri shower or two 17. Similar conditions in Clare. A little cooler with a top of 12 degrees there. And Broken Hill partly cloudy and is set to reach a high of 16. A shower or two for Port Lincoln, while in Adelaide on Sunday. Port Augusta, Port Pirie and Woodna will be partly cloudy to reach 17, 17 degrees. Broken Hill, 15. Sunny in Cooper Pedy, 19. Taking a look at next week's forecast, now partly cloudy across the region on Monday, except for in Cooper Pedy, with another sunny day to top 20 degrees there. It will get to 17 degrees in Port Lincoln, while at Kadena in Adelaide. Port Pirie and Woodna 18, Broken Hill 16. And to Tuesday now, mostly sunny conditions across the region. Port Augusta sunny 22, Port Pirie and Woodna to top 21. Well, it appears that it's perfect weather for a glass of wine by the fire tonight and tomorrow, Ruby. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. Back to you. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Friday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. And John Hunt and the team will see you on Monday. Good night.